In my last video we installed and ran a few tests on the Torp TC500 controller available for the Suron Lightby. But when doing the test I was still very new to how to actually tune and set up the controller correctly. That then led to a few false results and a lot of questions from people. So that's why in today's video we're going to go out for a ride on the Suron. We're going to look a lot deeper at how the Torp TC500 actually changes the Suron. We're also going to look at a more in-depth way of how you can tune the bike with the app on your phone and what settings we can use on the Suron to really get it to its full potential. There's going to be a few other tests involved today like wheelie hill climbs, top speed tests and now we've actually got it set up right. So without further ado, let's get out on the bike and we'll start running a few tests. Okay, so we're out on the bike. So before we get into running the tests that I wanted to do today with the top TC500, I want to make note of a few things that I actually had to change on the app from when I set the bike up to how I've been riding it recently and after riding the bike getting used to it, how I like my settings to be set at. So for a start, when I first did the tests on the TC500 in the installation video, I had my sprocket size and my wheel size set wrong. Now, the problem with this is, you need your sprocket ratio size, your gearing ratio, and you need your wheel size to be set correctly for the bike to know how fast you're actually going, for the speedo to be calibrated. Therefore, the top speeds were wrong. The mileage counter was also wrong, the odometer. That was also thrown out a false read in how many miles I'd done, again because the gear ratio and the sprocket size, that was all set wrong and the wheel diameter was set wrong. So for the wheel diameter size to be set, it's the exterior measurements of your wheels. So that is rims plus tyres. For the gear ratio to be set right, you have to have what size sprocket you're using set right. So I don't use the stock 48 tooth sprocket anymore, I'm using a 56 tooth sprocket. Therefore I had to set the sprocket ratio size on the app to 56 tooth. So we're at the first location where I wanted to run a few of these tests which will be comparing the stock power of the Suron compared to the top power of the TC500 that we can be running, which is 8.6 kilowatts. So at this spot with this track behind me, we're at a slight uphill and then it comes into a bit of a hill climb a bit further back. I'm going to be doing a few runs in the stock power form, which is roughly 4.5 kilowatts. Then we're going to be doing a few runs at top power that you can set on the TC500. Then we're going to be comparing the two so you get a real idea of what the Torp is capable of turning the Suron into. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the stock power. Before we start, I'm going to take a quick look at the app so you can see what I'm actually running the bike at. So we've got motor current at 450 amps. From what I understand, motor current is how much torque, how much power the motor is going to have. Changing the battery current is going to be the thing that changes the maximum power of the bike. So at the minute, when we go back down to 73 amps, that's what puts us at 4.5 kilowatts. Then for RPM, we've got infinite because we don't want to limit the speed. Throttle release regen, brake lever regen, both on zero. Then field weakening, we've got set to 30 amps. Field weakening is going to be the thing that's going to change the top speed. So we will have a look at changing that later on in the video. But for now, we're going to leave that at 30 amps. Okay, so we're set in eco mode, which is what we had the bike set at for all those settings that I just showed you. We're going to hit the go button and we're going to have a quick go up this track, see what we can do. So the wheel does still spin. This should be exactly like sport mode was on the original Suron setup. The original Suron tune. It definitely feels like stock was. Climbs it easily. Still get a little bit of air off of the jump. And it pulls no problem up the hills. So again, coming downhill, feels exactly like stock would have felt. Still get those speeds up there. We're doing 45 mile an hour. So if you've got a Sarah and you know exactly what sport mode feels like, that is exactly what sport mode would do. You still got the torque in there to throw the wheel up if you want. But then you've also got power to get some good speeds. So going back to the app to look at the settings that we're using for sport mode, we're at estimated power 8.6 kilowatts. Motor current is set to 500 amps. Battery current is set to 140 amps. RPM is at infinite. Regen's completely off again. And field weakening is at 30 amps. So this is nearly everything maxed out power wise. The only thing we can actually turn up now is the field weakening, but there is warnings to do with the field weakening when you go too high. So again, we're going to keep it at the lower ampage at the minute. Shouldn't really make massive difference to the top speed being that low, but even where we're riding the top speed is a bit irrelevant this is for more off-road testing so that is all the settings we got the bike at in sport mode literally everything maxed out apart from field weakening so we're back down the bottom we're going to press the m button the bike is now in sport mode so we're now at the full potential of the suron with the top tc500 let's hit it full throttle so already the back wheel spinning like crazy pull straight up here Absolutely no problems. <laughs> Loads of air off the little jump. And it just wants to keep going. So hopefully there you would have noticed how much more power 
the Sauron is pulling even just from hearing the bike and how the bike wants to throw that power out. So hopefully you can see from those tests there a bit of the difference between the stock sport power mode and the 8.6 kilowatt mode. Hopefully you saw that there's a hell of a lot more power being thrown out making the bike accelerate a lot quicker not necessarily making the top speed quicker but the acceleration is absolute insanity so i'm in stock sport mode form still on the Zeron, holding the wheelies uphill <laughs> so while we continue on i'm sort of the main route that i usually do on my Zeron. i want to talk about a few more things on the top a few few sort of changes compared to the stock bike everything that i talk about really is going to be compared to the stock Zeron controller i've never tried any other controller i've only ever tried the stock Zeron controller and the top tc500 and one of the biggest questions that you're probably going to get is the range how much does doubling the power of the bike affect the range and from what i've played with so far if you have the bike in the full power mode of 8.6 kilowatt it does obviously drain the battery a bit quicker depending on how you're using that battery as well so if i was riding the bike with the stock controller in sport mode i would roughly get around 25 miles to a ride and that wasn't necessarily draining the battery i always like to get home with a good 20 percent minimum in the battery just so I know that I'm not draining the battery too much. When running the same tests on this bike, again, standard riding, not pushing the bike, I would be pushing around about the same mileage even with the bike at 8.6 kilowatts. So even though I'm not mashing the throttle and getting full speed runs out of it, I am getting more power from the throttle because it's a lot more sensitive. It's got more instant power rather than having to twist the throttle the full way to get the 4.5 kilowatts you'd get stock. And then not only that, it's not like you have to be running your bike at full power all the time. So with the settings that I've shown you in the app, you can obviously have your eco mode and your sport mode set a completely different thing you can tune the controller to have a lot less power for your eco mode so if you do want to try and save a bit of battery you do want to make your ride last as long as it possibly can you can set that eco mode to a lot less power less motor current less battery power obviously therefore saving the power of your bike and then obviously it depends on how and where you're riding they will play massive parts in your actual range in the future i will be doing a full-on range test with the top tc500 uh, we're going to be doing tests with the bike on a lower power first going from 100% battery down to about 20% battery and then hopefully in the same video we'll be doing a full power Torp TC500 range test so the bike at 8.6 kilowatts uh, it won't be full on throttle everywhere, it won't be flat out riding, it'll be riding like I'm doing now but just with the bike set at a lot more power. Then we'll do a comparison with the bike set at stock mode and with the bike set in full power mode so we can really see what goes on with the range. Something else I never actually touched on in the video where I installed the Torp TC500 was how much it all costs, how much would you pay for the controller and the display screen that they sent me, how much would that cost? Well for a start because Torp's out in Croatia they charge in euros uh, when you go on the website everything comes up priced in euros the controller itself is priced at 800 euros and then the display is priced at 100 euros so add the two together you've got 900 euros that then converted into pounds you're looking at roughly 770 pounds i think i would have to go on a converter and properly check what the conversion would be in dollars i think that actually goes up a bit i think it is more around the 800 dollars 850 dollars mark um, don't quote me on that i could be completely wrong again i'd have to check on a converter but i think roughly that's what the conversion would be so the next part of the tests that i wanted to do while we're on this stretch of private road i'm just going to say that loud and clear for all the haters that want to go down in the comments private road okay so the next test that i want to hit are going to be some wheelies so we're going to go back into the eco mode setting stock sport mode setting we're actually going to wait for this car to come past us this is what it's going to be like to wheelie a stock sport mode sir on so there's going to be a lot of compression on the forks to actually get the wheel up the acceleration coming up is going to be slow but like you can see it does do it and then once you're up at the balance point the bike does actually hold itself really well you do have to use that throttle quite a bit to get back up to the balance point and once you're at a certain speed it's really hard to get that wheel back up once you're at a bit of a higher speed but it does wheelie a treat i feel like the stock throttle tune which i'm going to get into throttle tunes after this segment the one thing sir definitely did get right was the throttle tune or maybe i'm just so used to it that that's the only one that i care for but stock mode wheelies they do happen it's a bit slower the wheel does come up and then you need a lot more throttle to actually get the wheel keep bouncing up but like you've seen it probably a million times before it wheelies so then going into sport mode 
So we're in the full power mode now. We are slightly uphill. I don't need to compress the forks whatsoever. I just hit the throttle and the wheel comes up. That is not me trying at all. And then obviously because you've got so much more power available to you, you have to be so much more careful on the throttle. You can't just go ripping it full power to get your wheel back up because you will loop the bike. In the 8.6 kilowatt mode, literally throttle and the wheel comes up and it comes up quick. Uh, so like I say, after this, we're going to be looking at the throttle settings I've got tuned at, but it wheelies like an absolute beast and you've got disposable power there to throw the bike around. Even when you get up to say 20 mile an hour, the wheel will still come up. You will have to put a bit of effort into getting the wheel up at 20 mile an hour, but the stock Suron for me was a massive struggle to wheelie if you were doing anything above 10, 15 mile an hour. Let's get to 20 mile an hour. So we're at 20, bit of a pull up and that wheel still comes up so easily. And then if you're really trying, you can get the wheel, still keep it up. Uh, I'm at 35 mile an hour, getting up to near 40, and near 40 mile an hour is where the wheel wanted to drop and come back down. Which, really, you're near the top speed of the bike at that. You're 10 mile an hour-ish away from the top speed of what a stock Sauron would be. So to lose power there, really isn't anything to sort of worry about it's not something you can complain about losing losing really power at 40 mile an hour the bike is already working hard for you at that point but hopefully you can see i've progressed at my wheelies quite a bit and this controller definitely helps with that i'm not saying you need this controller to wheelie well because even if i go back to eco mode i can still get the wheel up absolutely fine i can even hold it there for as long as i want even in stock mode the bike does wheelie and the stock tune is the perfect tune to actually learn wheelies you're not going to have too much power you're not going to have not enough power it's the perfect learning point to actually get the wheel up once you're a bit better at wheelies and you want to be hitting them faster and harder that's when you're going to need the more power to really use the power in different places so we're even going to hit a knee knock knees on the seat wheel comes up this is in stock power mode again as well we're still not in sport mode and to be honest, I actually find wheelies like this a lot easier than I do sat down. For some reason, the balance point is just so much easier to find when you're on your knee on the seat. You can really feel when the bike's going to go back. You can feel when you need to bring the bike down. But yeah, wheelies absolutely completed. Absolutely insane on the, uh, on the power modes both power modes the way the torque tc 500 can be set up to really customize what power levels you want especially for things like wheelies is absolutely on point so going back to the app this is where i want to talk about the throttle settings also known as the throttle tune so on the app you have got at the top a smooth and aggressive rating mine is currently set at all the way at aggressive you got the throttle curve so i've got mine at minus 25 percent at the minute but i can change that right to 100 percent. so that for a start it's going to be throwing out loads of power and then it will start to curve off with the more throttle you give it and the vice versa for if you go to minus 100 further down the throttle when you're giving it more throttle that's when the more power will come for a start there won't be much power the reason i keep mine at minus 25 on the throttle curve is this is the closest to the stock throttle that i could get it i was so used to the stock throttle and really happy with how the stock throttle performed i really didn't want to change it and when i started messing around with the throttle curve on this app all i really wanted to do was get back to how the throttle originally felt i didn't want a different throttle feeling i just got really good at controlling the throttle with how it was set up so that's exactly Exactly what I wanted which is how we've got it set here minus 25% on the throttle curve fully aggressive this is exactly how the stock throttle felt to me then moving further down we've got dead zone at 1% I think the brake lever and the thumb response I think that's something to do with the regen throttle so I don't think that's anything to do with your actual throttle and the dead zone I believe is how much you can turn the throttle before it will kick in so with mine set at 1% it kicks in fairly early as soon as you're hitting the throttle it kicks in the highest you can go is up to seven percent so you can give it seven percent of your throttle twist before the bike starts moving i think that's what it means don't hold me to it but i'm pretty sure that's what dead zone means if anyone's clued up on the dead zone and wants to educate me down below in the comments feel free but for now that's what i'm going to say the dead zone is at least that's what it feels like so we're now at another stretch of private road which is where i wanted to do the speed tests so for a start we're going to be going in eco mode which again is set to the same as the stock sport mode setting on the Suron. 
The one thing we are going to change to these settings is we're going to put field weakening up to 50 amps. So we've put field weakening up to 50 amps. We're still running 450 amps on the motor current, still at 73 amps on the battery current, still at estimated power of 4.5 kilowatts. I've also got my GPS set up, so I'm going to put this in between my legs and we're going to get a reading on the GPS compared to the speedo on the bike. We're going to do a full speed test at the power of a stock sir running sport mode. Then we're going to come back and we're going to do the same again for the full power mode, seeing if we get any sort of increase. Remember, we are at 50 amps of field weakening this is not the highest if we set it up higher we would probably get an increased top speed but then we're also risking damaging the motor by doing so and then we're going to get going and with full throttle we are going to be going slightly uphill and slightly downhill in places so we're at 32 we're at 40 41 42 43 44 up to 45 46 47 Looks like we're going to stick around. We've gone back down to 43. So I think that's what we're going to get. So we've got 47 mile an hour on the speedo on the handlebars. If we go down and look at the GPS speedo, the maximum speed was 45 mile an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the GPS speedo. So we're going to go back to where we were. We're going to do the exact same thing on the full power mode. Again, this isn't full battery. A full battery might give you a bit more of a result, bit of a higher top speed. I purposely wanted to do this around this battery percentage because once your battery does come down from the 100 to 90% mark, obviously you're gonna lose a slight bit of power. So this is gonna give you a true reading of what you would probably get when riding the Suron after a, a couple of miles of riding. So we're back at the same spot, we're going to go over to the sport mode. Again looking at the tune, everything's the same. Field weakening is still at 50 amps, 500 amps on the motor current, 140 on the battery current, infinite RPM so we can go up as high as we like, and 50 amps on the field weakening. So the speedo is ready to go, double check, and then full throttle. So already the speedo is saying 40 mile an hour, 41, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. I think the highest we're going to get is 50. Not kill the squirrel. Okay, we're about at the same point that we started to slow down before. We got 50 mile an hour on the display on the bike and we got 48 mile an hour on the speedo on the GPS. So just from those speed tests, you will be able to see that with the field weakening especially, you can get a slightly higher top speed out of the Suron. It's also worth remembering that I have a 56 tooth sprocket. So my top speed is gonna be slightly less than what it would be if I was using a smaller sprocket. If you are using the stock sprocket on the bike, I would probably presume that you'd get an extra maybe five five to ten mile an hour more than what i was getting but we did have a slightly increased top speed in the full power mode of the bike slightly less top speed on the sport mode again this is still just a stock battery and you're still getting a massive increase in top speed hopefully that should answer some of the questions that people had from my last video on why the top speed was less or them saying oh my stock sir on can get 47 mile an hour but on your sir on you're actually only getting 40. that is because i had the gear ratio set up wrong i had the wheel diameter set up wrong Wrong, that changed everything on the speedo like I say it was telling me a lower top speed it was changing how many miles that I'd actually done on the bike so I was trying to do range tests it said I'd done about eight miles when I'd probably actually done 13 or 14 so nothing was actually tuned up and calibrated right so I was getting false readings all over the shop so with it getting dark on the Suron now I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here before the camera quality looks too rubbish to even carry on so hopefully this has answered a few questions that you may have had on the Torp TC500. Hopefully it's touched on a few of the topics that people wanted to conclude from my last video. Hopefully if you're looking at buying a Torp TC500, it's shown you what this bike is really capable of and what it can do after upgrading. Well worth the money well worth upgrading it literally leaves me speechless riding the bike every single time you get used to the power but you never get bored of the power if you do have any further questions on anything to do with the bike or the controller feel free to go ahead and leave it in the comments down below if you want to see more tests on the tc500 more tests on the Suron, go ahead and hit that subscribe button you won't be disappointed there's plenty more to come in the future i've got loads more videos planned and they're only getting better and better and better each time so with all that said and done I've been Matt Francis, I'm signing out.
Peace.